so we are going to change direction here. So all day long we've had amazing shows focusing on technology. It's not that we're going to get away from technology here, but we are going to be focusing on something a little bit different, which is radio. And uh, I've got two fabulous gentlemen up here. I've got uh, Flip Cadero, the principal of the Infinite Agency. And uh, of course, you're going to have to tell us all about that in about five seconds. And we also have Russ Francis, uh, the digital director of the Kid Craddock uh, in the morning show, which of course is syndicated and very, very well known. And uh, we're going to be grilling these gentlemen here right now to find out how they actually are making money, yes, money, by streaming. So first off, uh, Flip, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, your company? Right, so um, I run uh, the Infinite Agency. It's a digital uh, marketing agency based out of Dallas. Uh, we do a lot of design, a lot of social media marketing, um, and search engine marketing. Which, you know, you make it sound like, oh, you know, that's just nothing. But let's face it, you know, that's that's quite a feat today. I mean, we're talking Twitter, we're talking Facebook, we're talking everything online and being able to, so you, you basically help companies get their message out, get their branding out to everyone, anywhere, right? right yeah. The world. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, social media is such a huge um, uh, media, obviously, it's worldwide distribution instantly. Uh, and we really help our clients uh, be able to uh, really monetize, really help and monetize uh, those social media channels, uh, channels, which is a really difficult thing to do. It is. It's really hard. Um, and we're still learning, uh, obviously, because uh, technology is growing. But we've been really successful with some of our clients, like uh, Keep Craddock in the Morning. Yeah, so Russ, I guess that, that sends it off to you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do now? Uh, yeah, I handle all of the digital media for Keep Craddock in the Morning, which for us is a lot. You know, it's everything from a website to apps to social media and, and beyond for Keep Craddock in the Morning and our charity Kids Kids as well. So, tell me about how you guys got to know each other and how you started working together. Well, well actually, uh, one of our stories is that we uh, launched on Houston. Uh, we were syndicated all around the country and we launched on Mix 96.5 in Houston and we really wanted to make a big splash in there because it was the biggest station that we launched on in years and we wanted to make sure that it worked and you know while we're known on a lot of stations and cities all over Texas we, we didn't want to take the risk of going in there and not having it work and while we have a quality product we want to make sure that everyone knows about it in every way possible and uh, we had heard about these guys through, uh, through products and campaigns that they've done before and we said, hey, what can you do for us? So when we launch in Houston, uh, we make a big splash. And, and Flip, you can talk a little bit about what you guys did for us. Then. Yeah, uh, so, so you know, the real question was, how do you take uh, an amazing radio show yeah. and um, how do you move its cities into a huge city like Houston, uh, but in a way where it's cost effective, right? And how do we use social media channels and advertising uh, in order to get the buzz around, as opposed to just throwing up, uh, just throwing up billboards, right? Which is typically that's the, the traditional way of doing it. Uh -huh. uh, just plaster your face all over the city. <laughs> now, and we also did that. Kid Craddock's face was all over billboards as well. But um, what we did was was we really looked at strategy and saying, uh, who are the people in Houston and. and and how do we get them to know about Kid Craddock? What we realized was um, Houston's such a transient city, so many people uh, had, had, had moved there, right? From Dallas or from Florida or from these other markets. Or, or from New Orleans after Katrina. Yeah. Yeah, we're on in New Orleans as well. Interesting. Right, huh. so, so what we did was we targeted um, all those people that moved to Houston, uh, and, and including um, all friends and connections of people uh, like, like people who lived in Dallas but had friends in Houston. So we did these campaigns, you know, spread the word to your friends uh, and be able to target to all those people that moved. It was really great because we saw a resurgence of, of people coming back to Kid Craddock because, you know, Kid Craddock's been on, on the air for so long. I remember being a kid, um, he actually spoke at my sixth grade graduation. <laughs> Right? So he, he's not a big fan when, when you try to date him. Sorry, but that's sorry, right. kid. But what I'm saying is, is you grew up in uh, growing up in Dallas. I uh, you have this relationship with Kid Craddock, and, and he's he fills your morning all of our morning. So it was great because we got to connect with a lot of people in Houston that that um, didn't have that shared experience.
longing for it. Right, and, and those that grew up in Dallas or grew up in other places growing up with Kid Craddock, listening to him, and then coming back to the show and hearing it on the radio back in Houston that they, they've, they've been out. They haven't been able to listen to Kid in however many years since they moved to Houston. So it was a great way to really... Um, it was great to see those people come out and just say, you know, I'm so glad the show's back on the air, and I'm so glad that it's here in Houston now, and we really got to get them to tell all their friends about it. Well, so how did, how did you track that? I mean, you know, isn't that a good question? How right. did you actually track all those different people? I mean, that's a, that's a big feat. Right, so... You can't get people to fill out, you know, a little form or something like that, or did you? Or was right. it something online that you did? No, I, I just have to say Facebook analytics and Facebook advertising is uh, our number one friend. Wow. And, um, you know, you're really able to, na to, to really geo-target, nano-target um, certain people with certain interests. And, uh, you know, you could, search, you could search and target people by their hometowns. So, so we knew. So, Russ, so tell me then, uh, so obviously, you know, this is your baby, the show, and yep. you really wanted to take it beyond, which it was our, it's already a hugely successful show. But now, I mean, how large has the fan base grown? Uh, currently, we, we talk to about two and a half million people on a weekly basis, and uh, we're on in 85 markets around the country and also on the uh, Armed Forces Network. So uh, people over in Iraq or Korea or based in Germany, they can all hear the show on a daily basis. And, um, and it's, you know, it's really been great for us, especially that Armed Forces Network, to um, we get a lot of feedback that people say, you know, hey, we, we love hearing the show. It gives us a little bit, a little taste of home. Um, and so, you know, two and a half million people is, is a pretty big, pretty big number. So now let's get into the streaming aspect because this is not just radio, right? It's not just something that you're listening to, but you've also incorporated the fact that you can watch these streams live. Uh, do you want to talk about uh, essentially how you guys decided to bring that in? Is that one of the first strategies that you guys decided? Yeah. Um, well, you, you know, it, it all starts with Kid, who, you know, is head of the company. Uh, several years ago, he bought the rights back to his own show from Clear Channel Radio and you know because he wanted to be able to make his own decisions and and do things with his own money and he's always been on the edge of tech you know he always wants to be in a social media space before it exists and so when it came to um, New Tech's TriCaster and and Ustream as a broadcasting platform he he said, yeah, let's do that. And, and it first started out, you know, kind of crude. There were just a couple, like one camera, one still shot camera in the corner and, uh, and hooked up directly to Ustream. And then later on, you know, he said, well, how can we make this better? And, and the great folks at New Tech said, hey, we've got this thing called the TriCaster. And, you know, it, it's way easier to use than traditional TV, um, you know, what TV's used in the past. And... And we looked at it and went, wow, th this is really great. And so we started using it and added more cameras. And now we have some handheld cameras. And we're planning to uh, uh, upgrade that even more. And, uh, you know, it, it really expands the experience. Because while radio is great and people can get it in their cars, you know, we wanted to deliver something above that. And while producing a TV show on its own, while producing a TV show on its own is difficult and very costly, this was definitely a cost-effective solution for us that was able to reach people when they got to work. They got out of their car. Some people aren't even allowed to have radios in their office, but they're at a computer. Or, you know, later on, now on mobile phones, you can watch the show on your mobile phone. So when we have Will Ferrell in studio or, you know, any of the big stars that we have in studio, they're able to see all that or you know just just the show sometimes yeah you can get reactions and and, and our show gets a little crazy sometimes so you know the, there's a little bit that you're missing out on when you're hearing it on the radio sure and you don't get to see the crazy antics that everybody's doing or or actually how comfortable everyone feels and i think that's a major part you get to see the star you know kind of relax a little bit and come out a bit more than you might normally see, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And w it also gives us the ability to add content to the show. So when we're doing celebrity gossip and they're talking about a picture of Kim Kardashian that she tweeted of herself without makeup, um, we're able to... I don't believe it. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can talk about that on the radio and maybe people saw it 
on TMZ or they saw it on Facebook. But when you're watching the show on what we call it Kid TV, um, KidTV.com, by the way, um, w when you're watching it, you know, Nick, uh, Nick Adams, who is our director of the show and does all the switching, um, he, director of the show on the video side, he, he's able to instantly pull up the picture, add it to, you know, using the TriCaster and, uh, and add to that experience that way. So, so let me ask you this. Let's, let's talk about money. I mean, this is a, a major big deal. You know, the Internet's fantastic. It's allowing, you know, bloggers, uh, you know, all different kinds of people to be able to get their message out and to reach their fan base, which is really, really important. But the main thing is how do you fund that little puppy, right? How do you make the money to sustain that? And so if you guys don't mind sharing a little bit about that experience, you know, and I'm sure on your end, it was also how, you know, with a great formula that was created, how to make that transition to, uh, you know, any of your other customers. But Russ, let's take it with you first. Absolutely. Um, because obviously there is a cost uh, to us to, to be able to do it. You know, we, we don't pay to be on Ustream and people don't pay to be on YouTube. But in, in our case, when we went from that one static camera to, uh, you know, ha having someone have to actually switch the cameras and, and uh, add in B-roll and add in, you know, the extra images and, and, and things that make the show, you know, an actual show, um, you know, so there, there's all of a sudden manpower now that we have to pay. But what we found is when we go to break on the radio, uh, we play commercials. And when we go to break on the internet now, we play commercials as well. Limited amount of commercials, but we do play commercials. And we've also found it a, a great way to include our promotional partners. So when we're doing... Um, when we're involved with, let's say, uh, Rihanna's people to promote her new album, yes. Uh, part of the deal now is that we'll play Rihanna's video on during the breaks on Ustream using the TriCaster, and we'll play that ten times during this week. So twice a day, uh, we'll roll in her video, or we'll, you know, and we'll include the sponsor message or or whatever it is you know if if uh, if a customer if a client gives us a promotion for a trip to an awesome resort in the Caribbean what we can do is you know you, on the radio yeah that sounds cool but then we can actually uh, show a promotional video that was shot or sometimes we go shoot it ourselves if it's something local or uh, sometimes we actually broadcast like we broadcast from the Hard Rock in Punta Cana and so all of that is you know while it may not just be an ad per se like the traditional 30 second spot all of it adds to what we're able to give a client yeah that's awesome so so you guys are kind of pioneering a little bit the ability to take local and the bigger picture global and mix that all together and actually really make it work so you're you're also not losing your local fan base when you're you know talking on a higher level with about Rihanna or whatever, right? And right. then, uh, uh, you know, on a local level, it's probably also interesting for the guys, you know, overseas to go, oh, yeah, man, I, I miss being home. It's probably refreshing to them as well. So, you know, why don't you tell us now a little bit about that whole experience and then uh, and bringing it to other, you know, companies that are dying to be able to make money as well. Right. So so the, the great thing about uh, about the show is that, the content, right? The content is great. The content um, is what makes it. Content and is king, content after all, is, always is it king not? And it always is going to be king. And I think that, uh, you know, you see a radio show like, like Kid Crack in the Morning, and when you add uh, the element of video in it, um, you know, it's just such an engaging medium, right? And so, uh, you know, people love, uh, people love watching videos, and especially live streaming, right? Because I don't own a TV, right? Um, and there's a lot of people who don't own TVs now. I don't have cable, right? Um, one things I can't see, I can't ever watch, are live events, right? So sports I can't see, uh, and I have to go to the local bar for that. But hopefully that's going to bridge. Poor now, you. Right, I know. But <laughs> the, the great thing about, about the show is that uh, it is a live show, and it's in real time. And that's some great, cap you have a great captive audience. And I think that uh, we're going to see that more in social channels. I think that... Um, I think that all brands, I mean, we, we tell us to every client, you know, when we walk in, we, we have to create great content. It's always scary. It's always scary, especially like 
you know, what does a uh, retail center do to create content? What yeah. does a restaurant do to create content um, that engages their customers and, and, and friends of their customers, uh, you know, through things like Facebook and Twitter? Um, and, and not only how do you get them in the door, how do you keep them engaged? But I do think that, you know, in the future, we're going to see we're going to see the monetization of our social channels as well. You know, um, just like, you know, Russ is, I mean, Kid Craddock, obviously, the show is able to say, oh, you know, we got Rihanna and no big deal. And you know, we talk to Rihanna's <laughs> people and play her video and they pay us, you know, money for it. Now, obviously, what do you all, mean? I talk to Rihanna's people, right. too, all the time. Uh, <laughs> obviously, all brands can't do that. Right. And especially our clients here are, you know, mainly local or regional brand right. brands aren't able to do that and say, yes. oh, I'm just going to run a Rihanna video. But but you will see that. I mean, you, you will see other sponsorship opportunities. You will see other promotional opportunities. Um, if you have an engaged audience, that's something that other people will pay for. And that's something that's really important when we start talking about social media um, and how, how all of our engagement and all of our interactions happening uh, through the digital space as well. Uh, and we're getting so much of our entertainment through that, you know. Um, People, uh, you know, people are spending more time um, in engaging in social. Obviously, everyone knows this, that, you know, everyone is just spending more time because we like people and we like talking to each other and other people are interesting. Well, and we also have, let's not forget, we also have cool technology that we can take anywhere. Our, right. our iPhones, right. our iPads, right? So oh, yeah. we can watch that show anywhere. I can sit in the bathtub and, you know, I'm not locked down in my TV or my computer you at all. You phone like in a Ziploc bag in the bathroom. I mean, you know, I, that's no. too much information. I can't tell you those things. Actually, actually OtterBox. <laughs> and now they'll give me one free. Um, right. No, but, but you know, you, you were talking about taking it anywhere. And that's something that we've done through our app and integrating our, uh, our kid TV onto the app as well. And yeah, you can go, you know, you can be secretly in your office watching on your iPad and the boss doesn't know. And you can still get things done on your computer. And I bet so, people have a great time saying, oh my God, I'm doing this right now. And they feel naughty. The There's probably that whole aspect that <laughs> actually makes it kind of thrilling. Right. And the, the interaction is crazy. So imagine um, if, if we were, if anyone was on the social stream of this talk, right? So yeah. we would be able to talk back and forth or, or we're at South by Southwest. Um, it, it's it's amazing to see uh, you know being in a conversation, being in a talk, uh, and watching a talk, and then witnessing the conversation in the real world. And I, I'm sitting there tweeting my friends back in Dallas and other agencies and in other cities, uh, other networks, and and we're having a conversation about what's happening now in real time. Yeah. And that's something it, obviously that everyone's uh, doing now, but but I don't think brands have have. Uh, I think we're beginning to really understand the power of, of what that is. And when you see a show like Kids, um, it's, it's amazing to see the interactivity. You're able to uh, really talk to them in real, in real time. Well, you guys are both doing phenomenal things, I mean, truly, and definitely two examples, two very cohesive things to watch. And most importantly, like I said, it's not everyone that is, has the ability to make money and figure out that whole process. So, you know. Good for you guys, seriously. Thank you. Um, now, uh, just on a last note, so South by Southwest, is this the first time you've been here, or how many times have you actually attended this uh, trade show? Yeah, f for first time here for both of us. Um, actually, my first time to Austin, and, and I, I've, I've just been having a great time, you know, making Your a lot of connections. first time in Austin. First time in Austin. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> no, it, it, everyone was telling me, you have to go to Austin, you have to go to Austin, and... Um, Obviously, I'm sure the South by experience is different than Austin a month from now, but this, but this has been amazing, just meeting so many smart, talented people and getting ideas, stealing ideas, uh, making relationships, and, uh, and I, I've, just, I've just loved it. There's a lot of cool stuff that happens here. Yeah, would you guys think about bringing your show here and doing a live, you know, event here? That would be kind of fun, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, kid, kid uh, went to CES this year and broadcast from CES um, that the Friday of that show, and uh, y you know, so so he's like I said, he's really on the forefront of technology, and um, this year it corresponded with uh, the the show's week off uh, for their little spring break, so. Uh, so they're they're having a good time. Uh, Kelly Raspberry's out in Hawaii, and I think kids up in New York for the weekend. But you know, you know, so they're enjoying a little bit of time off right now. But maybe maybe next year, maybe it'll work out where the so, time. So so what's also the craziest thing you've witnessed or you've partaken in? 
You're, you know, it's, it's, this experience is crazy because um, there's like tons of like, there's just a bunch of internet nerds here. And well, now, like, how amazing is well, that? right now, I mean, right, this is the, the last day of the, of technology, essentially, the interactive session. It's moving into film, and then it's going to move into music beyond that. That's what's phenomenal to me. It's this, this big, giant ecosystem of, I don't even know what to say, of creativity of all forms. I mean, truly. That's what's blowing me away. I mean, I just like to look around. I like to people watch. I like to just walk on the sidewalk and listen to what people are saying. It's some of the weirdest stuff I've ever heard about all different kinds of topics. Right. And you know? it's a, it, it really is interesting to see so many people who care about this stuff. And it, it's, it's <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's like I can go to 30 different sessions on like Facebook marketing. And like, who cares about that stuff? These people do. Yes. And it's, it's really awesome. And um, also an interesting thing as well is, uh, you know, this whole idea, you know, if you just did you see the keynote that was earlier today? No, I didn't. Or, uh, it was it was brought up of of technology and how you know there's so many people hunched over, looking at their phones <laughs> and connected, and it's this it's this interesting interaction here. Um, and well, well, yeah, that's what you said said the first day. You said for this being the interactive, people aren't really interacting. But but I found that yeah, maybe the first day it wasn't like that. But I, you you can go on. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just it's it's great to see uh, people are moving up from their phones and and talking face to face to people, um, and it's it's just really, I, I think it's really amazing to see like where where we're going and how how much we really desire connectivity and how much we desire uh, to 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 connect with other people uh, and to keep in connection with other people. I mean. I've never networked like this in my entire life. Agreed. So. And you know, uh, you know what's phenomenal, especially with this technology sec section of this show, is that you think about people have been, you know, conversing online or through technology, and they're meeting actually for the first time face to face from all over the globe. So it truly is becoming a small, small world because we're all totally connected. And you know, maybe we're starting to retrain some of the younger generation to actually make eye contact with people and say hello and actually know what to say instead of, oh God, everything has to go through, you know, my phone or, you know, my computer device, whatever it is. Yeah, I I, I think the one one of the big things I got out of this is the fact that the interactive is now bigger than music or and it's bigger than the film is the fact that you could have done South by Southwest online. This could really just be an online thing. It could all be streamed. You know, I mean, we're talking about streaming, which is amazing, but you know, it, it's great that all these people decided to come here from Japan and England and Toronto and, and all, Berlin. all over the place. Yeah. And, yes. and everyone a came shout here. Out to your ancestry. <laughs> no, but I just saw it, you know, it, when I opened my uh, door today from my hotel, the first thing was like, you know, and welcome Berlin, you know, which is so cool. Right. And Especially in America, you know, you, you do hear here and there about global things, but, you know, not really. And I really like that, you know, they're reaching out to, you know, all the new different uh, countries from all over that are excited to bring whatever technology whatever music, you know, whatever films, you know, and, and make it a part of this great smorgasbord of happening. Yep, and, and technology, you know, I mean, it, it really is going to be the true equalizer because, you know, someone in Africa can code just like someone here. Yes. Well, you guys, thank you so much.